welcome back to the Country Cow Designs channel. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make the Lawan bag, which is my new sewing pattern. It's available from countrycowdesigns.com if you want to sew along with me, or you can just watch the video and enjoy the sewing. So um, as you know, with most of my patterns, I love options. So this one is no different. It's got lots of options. Now, the first option that you will notice is side pockets. So it features these lovely side pockets, or if you want to, you can make it without the pockets. So this is my first advanced pattern and it's an advanced pattern because zips are tough, curves are tough, put some zipped curves in there and it is advanced. Um, these pockets, they're challenging, they really are. So if you want an easier sew or if you just want a quicker sew, you can go ahead and make it without the pockets. Now on this one, I actually just made it without the handles as well. So handles in the pattern, you've got the options for long handles, which are designed to go over the shoulder, or you've got the option for just some short grab handles. And you've got the option to add a crossbody strap. So the crossbody strap just clips onto the rectangle rings and you can just wear it like that. So lots of options for different straps. I am also going to be releasing another just short hack video on how to add D rings on the sides if you would rather have a crossbody strap like this. So this one I made for my husband Adam as a camera bag. It's got loads of extra padding in it. Um, and it's designed to hold his camera equipment as well as his camera when he goes out. So oh, what other options have we got? We've got card slots as well. So if you want to, you can add card slots, three card slots in each end pocket. And if you'd like to, you can add zip tabs on the back. Now these tabs are great for when you're closing the zip. They're great for holding on to but some people don't like the look of them. So that's fine. If you, if you don't want them, I didn't put them on this one and you can still get your zips closed, um, but you'll probably just want to hold on to the handle because it's just a little bit tougher to get closed. So I think that is all of the options for this one. This is the bag that I made during this video tutorial um, because I filmed an entire video tutorial making this one only to realize the camera wasn't working. So then I made this one, hence why this one is so bright because I needed, I needed that nice bright color to keep me going. So it's got a really nice big wide opening here um, and inside it doesn't have any pockets. I wanted to kind of keep it simple inside because otherwise it was gonna be a really long bag to make. So it's just got these side pockets. These side pockets are designed to fit like a standard iPhone 11 and that sort of thing. So it just fits perfectly in there, which you know is really handy when you want to keep your phone handy. Now you're probably wondering why it's called the Lawan. So the Lawan, uh, Lawan in Cornish means fox. Now I made this bag because my sister Debbie, she really wanted uh, me to like make a bag similar to one that she had when we were younger. I don't remember said bag, so um, I was just going off her pictures and things, and she said it had two end zip pockets. So I came up with this. Apparently this is nothing like the bag, <laughs> but we both really like it, so we stuck with it. And we were calling it the Foxy bag, and then we decided Fox in Cornish was the perfect name for it. So hence it's called the Lawan. Now I think that's everything you need to know about the bag. If you're not ready for an advanced pattern, definitely make it without the pockets. It's, it's much more of an intermediate friendly. Um, if you really, really struggle with the tube stitch in this pattern, because that is probably one of the hardest parts, you can leave it out, okay? I did that on this one, um, just to, so that I could show you what it looks like. So the tube stitch is when we top stitch this back bit just here, and that looks great. But if you can't do it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not a structural stitch. It still looks great. It stays in place. So if you really struggle with that step, don't be afraid to just skip it. Right, I think that's everything. So if you've got any questions about the bag or anything like that, just let me know in the comments. Um, if you want to hear about next videos, including the hack for the side connectors, just subscribe to the account. And if you can give me a thumbs up, if you like the video, that's a massive help to me. If you already follow my channel, 
you're probably wondering about my hair and yes I did chop it all off so hopefully you like it as much as I do. Um, please feel free to leave any comments or email me at countrycowdesigns at gmail.com and I'll always try to get back to you within a day or two. I really hope you enjoy this tutorial and have a good time sewing. Okay, so I've had quite a bit of trouble with um, technical issues with this tutorial. So that's why my fabrics are now different because I did film the entire tutorial using the blended threads fabric um, just to realize that the camera wasn't working correctly. So this is my second attempt. And instead I'm gonna be using some tobacco cork for the exterior with the dark Allison glass fabric. And then for the lining, I've got some light Allison glass fabric and some rainbow fabric. So we'll set all this aside and get started on step two, because step one is preparation. So make sure you've read through that step and decided what you want for your bag before you start. So for step two, you're going to have your two handles and you'll have six of these, two of which are for zip tabs and four of which are for handle connectors. We're also going to do the crossbody strap in this step, but we'll deal with that later on. So first things first, um, grab your handle connectors and zip tabs and draw a line down the center of each one. And then you're just gonna use the double-sided tape or you could use fabric glue or something like that. Or you could even just use clips to hold this in place. But you're gonna fold the two long edges into that center line and clip that in place. You might want to just press it if you're using cotton or cork. So you want to do this with all six. And then just for two of these, for the zip tabs, we're gonna to top stitch an eighth of an inch seam allowance down both long edges. Okay, so this is what you should have once you're done. You've got four handle connectors with no stitching and two zip tabs which have been top stitched. So just set those aside and we're gonna move on to the handles. So same again, you want to draw a line down the center and what we're gonna do is fold the long edges into the center. But if you're using double-sided tape or glue, don't stick down the very last one and a half inches. We need to keep that open for a minute. Now that's all stuck down, grab two of your rectangle rings and just pop those onto your handle. Now you want to put these two short ends right sides together. So this is why we didn't stick the ends down. And you just want to clip those together. So we're going to sew through this short edge with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn together, you just want to press that seam open. Now, because I'm using cork, I'm going to use a little bit of double sided tape just to hold this open. Now you want to fold the rest of the handle down to this center line. And just do that with both sides, I'm trying to make sure that that seam is as neat as it can be. Okay, now you're going to turn this so that it's all wrong sides together. And you need to decide where you want your seam. So you can have your seam on the center of the handle. So it'd be like that on the inside. Or on this occasion, I'm going to put it right next to one of my rectangle rings. So I'm just going to bring it up to there and just put it just below the rectangle ring. Now I'm just gonna clip the rest of the strap into place. So we're just clipping this whole thing so that it's wrong sides together and you've got a nice neat finish on both sides of the handle with no raw edges. Now that's all clipped into place, I'm gonna sew the long edges and the short edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna use my hump jumper when I get up to the rectangle rings. That will help me to get a nice neat finish because I can use my standard presser foot and my hump jumper will keep it propped up and level with the rectangle ring.
So you'll need to repeat that process so you've got two handles. Now we'll set this aside and move on to the crossbody strap. So for this, you're going to need your crossbody strap piece, a slider and two swivel hooks. Now, if you need to have a join in your crossbody strap, just follow the instructions in the pattern. And if you would rather make a crossbody strap that um, has no raw edges and has double sided, then just check out the tutorial on my YouTube channel for that. So for this one, I've already drawn a line down the center of the strap. And same as with the handles, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape and I'm gonna stick these two edges down so that they meet in the center. Now my crossbody strap is folded into the center. I'm gonna fold it again on that center line. So I'm just gonna fold it like this and put this together. Now, if you're using cotton or cork, you don't want to have any raw, sorry, cotton or canvas, you don't want to have raw edges. So make sure that you follow the instructions in the pattern for ensuring that you don't have any raw edges on that. For me, having a raw edge like this on cork on the end of a crossbody strap, not a problem. Um, but if you want to, you can get strap um, ends to fit onto it. Or alternatively, you could just follow my other tutorial on YouTube, which shows you how to do one without any raw edges. Now my strap is clipped along the entire length. I'm going to sew this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down all the edges. And then I'm going to sew two extra lines of stitching down the center with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so what we're going to do now to create our crossbody strap is bead this through one side of the slider and then we just want it to fold back over this center bar here and you want it to come back um, by anything up to two inches really, maybe one and a half to two inches. So I'll just clip that for now. And what we're going to do is just sew this into place and then you can sew an X across it as well. But because I'm using cork and I've got rivets, I'm going to set a couple of rivets instead of doing the X. Now what you need to do is grab the open end of your strap and put a swivel clasp on that end. Then you want to go back through the slider. and right over the top of that middle bar again. So my slider is gonna be a nice snug fit. You can get extra thick ones um, for all cork and all vinyl straps. So I do have some of those as well, but this one just about fits, so I'm gonna use that. And then on the open end, you want to put a swivel clasp through there, fold it back again about one and a half to two inches, and just Click that in place. Now again, you're going to want to sew a box here and then an X, but I'm actually going to fit four rivets instead on mine, um, but that's totally optional. Um, if you're just doing two rivets, then definitely sew the box still with the X. So that is your crossbody strap all done. So just set that aside and now we're going to move on to step three. For step three, we're making the tongue closure. You're going to need your tongue closure in lining and in the exterior fabrics, and you're also going to need your stabilizer. 
So you don't want to fuse this until later. We're also going to need the male part of the magnetic snap, a washer and a scrap of Decaville or foam or something to back that with. And then you're going to have your two zips. So these are your nine inch zips and you don't want to have zip pulls on them yet. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare the zips. Now what we want to do is have one edge turning like this. So I've already done this one. What you need to do is mark it three quarters of an inch down from the end. Now we want one zip to go left and one to go right. So this one I've marked the right hand side. And I'm just going to separate the zip. And then if you just kind of pinch it on this line that you've drawn, then you can create a nice neat fold like that. Now you can take that over to your sewing machine if you like and sew that into place, but I'm just going to use a needle to do a couple of stitches by hand because I find it easier to hold it in place whilst doing this. Now this doesn't need to be neat at all, just holding it in place. Now that's done, set those two aside and grab your lining piece. And we're going to fit the magnetic snap. So you'll need your washer and you should have your paper pattern piece which has the location of the magnetic snap shown on it. So you can just use that to mark your lining piece or you can measure one inch up and centered. Now place the washer on top of that mark and just mark those two side slits. So I'm just going to use a small pair of scissors or you could use a seam ripper to just cut these. And then I'm going to use some fray check on those slits. Now I've already marked those side slits on my Decaville scrap, so I'll just cut those as well. And then you need to put your magnetic snap through the slits in the fabric, through the Decaville, and then through the washer and fold those prongs back. Now on the exterior piece, you need to mark ready to set your zips. So we're measuring seven and three eighths of an inch from this straight back edge and you're just going to mark that and mark that on both sides okay now grab your zips and we want to line them up with these marks so you want to have the turned teeth these teeth here lined up with this mark so i'm just going to place that on the edge and clip that together and then just clip it the rest of the way down this zip. Now on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna match up my turned teeth and clip that in place. Now those are both clipped into place. I'm just gonna baste them with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you've got those zips pasted into place, you want to place the lining piece on top and just clip that all the way around. Now I'm going to sew all the way around here with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you struggle sewing curves like this, what you can do is on the paper pattern piece, it's got a dashed line to mark the seam allowance. So you can print out another copy, cut it, place it on top and you can just draw your seam allowance on. So that will make it much easier to sew around those curves. Now for me, I prefer to use a standard presser foot when I'm sewing this sort of thing. So I'm gonna use a standard presser foot, but I'm gonna move my needle to the furthest position so it's as close to the zip as it can get. Now I've sewn that, I'm just going to use pinking shears on these curves. I just find that that helps like the curve to sit better 
once I've turned it. But I'm not going to trim my zips down. Um, personally, I do not like trimming my zips down. I feel like leaving them in the seam just gives them a bit of added strength. Um, it's something that we do more often with strap connectors, but for me, I just feel like surely the same applies for zips, so I leave them as they are. Now what I'm going to do is turn this out through here, and this is the reason that we haven't added the Decaville yet, because if you have the Decaville in whilst you're turning it, it's really tough to turn, especially if you're using like cork or vinyl for your exterior. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes sort of pushing this out, making sure that the seams are rolled out. Don't worry if your zips split apart a little bit like this. It's probably best not to let them get completely separated, but it's not the end of the world if they do. So this turning tool um, I just got off Amazon. I think I just searched for sewing turning tool and this works quite well. I'll link it in the video description. I'll try and remember to link all of my tools just so if you're looking for anything, you can find it easily. And I just use that to get those edges out. Okay, now I'm gonna go and press this on both sides with an iron. Okay, so now we need to put the Decaville inside. So you just wanna slip that in. Try to make sure it doesn't get caught on your magnetic snap as you go in. Okay, I'm just going to fuse that in place and then we're going to top stitch all the way around here with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. and just close off this top section as well. So now we're on to step four, which is the top panel. And for this step, you're going to want your two lining top pieces, your two exterior top pieces, your tongue closure, two zip tabs, four handle connectors, two handles, two zipper pulls, and if you're using them, eight rivets. Now, first of all, we're just gonna start with the exterior top pieces. So if you've cut your fabric out to match like I have, you just make sure that you've got your fabrics the right way round so I can see that matches there and that matches there. Now I'll start with this side first. What I'm going to do is place this right sides together with the open side of the zip. Make sure that the straight edges at the top are matching and clip those into place. Now I'm going to baste that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but first of all, I'm just gonna clip the other side so that I can do them both at the same time. So again, I'm gonna place it right sides together with this open edge of the zip. Make sure that they line up on these top straight edges and just clip into place. And we'll just baste both of those with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now those are basted into place, just flip that over and we're going to do the same thing with these lining pieces. So again, I'm going to make sure that my colours are matching. Now I'm going to place this right side down onto this side of the zip and I'm going to make sure that the top edges line up and clip that down the side. And then I'm going to clip the other side on at the same time. Now I'm going to sew through both of these with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that your lining is sewn into place, you need to push this away from the zip and just press it with your fingers. If you're using cotton like me, you can also Take it over to the iron and press it with an iron. So you just want to push both the exterior and lining away from the zip so that you get like a nice crisp finish. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press that with the iron to make sure it stays in place. Then we're going to top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down here and down here. And when you're top stitching this, just make sure that you're top stitching through both the exterior and the lining. So you can start to see your top panel coming together now. So for the next step, we're going to put our zips on. Now, if you struggle with this, you might just want to mark your zips. Just It might just make it a little bit easier um, if you're unsuccessful on the first attempt. So it just gives you something to work off. Because then you can just try and make sure you get those lines matched up. Now, what I do, I simply pull it apart at the top and I put the rounded edge of the zip onto one side. So we're not going all the way, we're just going about halfway in. And then you want to put the other side in to match so that they're equal. Then just give it a little push. So it will be like that. Now if you push down on these two parts of the tape, you can just pull it on nice and easy. Now, if your zip isn't quite straight, you'll see like a big bulge. So that's what you want to watch out for. Mine looks pretty straight, so I'm just going to take it down to the bottom. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty straight. And then what I'll do is I'll fit the other one on the other side. Now, if it doesn't happen for you first time, don't worry about trying a second time. It's not a problem. But you'll know if you've got it sort of wonky because those lines that you drew won't match up. So you want to make sure that they're still straight. So you can really start to see what this is going to look like on top of the bag now. All right, next we need to mark these top panels so that we can fit the handle connectors. So you want to mark them one and a half inch in. So just line up one and a half inches there with the edge. And then we're going to measure half an inch up and that's where we're going to mark it. So I'll just mark a little line there. So that's one and a half inches in and half an inch up. I'll do the same up here and on the other side. Okay, now turn this over and what we're going to do is clip this lining out of the way because we do not want to sew through the lining for this next bit. Okay, so where these marks are, that's where we're going to fit our handle connectors. So you want these to be wrong side up. So this open side, this messy side, that's the side that you want facing up right now. And you want one of these short edges to line up with the mark you made. So it's going to be one and a half inches in, half an inch up. And you just want to clip that in place. Now, when you're making these marks, remember you need to use like an erasable fabric pen or a Taylor's chalk, something like that. If it's your first time using that marker on this fabric, test it on a scrap first. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew this into place. This is going to mean that this section isn't in the seam, which reduces the bulk later on. But when you're sewing it, don't go off the edges. You're just sewing the middle of this connector. I'm going to fit the other four and then that way I can sew them all on at once. Just make sure that all your handle connectors are nice and straight, they're all matching each other, and then we're going to sew each of them on. Okay, so now that those are in place, you can hopefully see that I haven't stitched off the edge, because that way when we bring this down later, you can't see the stitching. So I'm going to fit my first handle. Now, whichever way you're doing it, Wherever your seam is, make sure your seam is on the inside. So this is going to be the outside of my handle. And what I'm going to do is push this 
handle onto that handle connector and then this is going to fold down to the very edge. Okay, so you want to make sure that you can't see the underneath, that it's not sort of poking out like that. You want it to be nice and neat and this is running up to the edge, so we're not going to have any raw edges on show. Now I'm going to sew a box here to sew this into place. I'm going to get as close as I can to the rectangle ring and then I'm going to fit a couple of rivets afterwards. But we'll put this one on as well and that way we can sew them both into place at the same time. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that your handle is like this. It's not twisted or anything like that. It's going to sit up straight and correctly. Now, if you've got long handles, it'll look quite different to this. So I'll just take this over to the sewing machine and sew that box. If you're not having rivets on your handles, make sure you sew an X through that box as well to add strength. Now that my handle connectors are fitted, what I'm going to do is just mark my rivets. So I've got one inch wide handle connectors and that means I can fit two rivets on each one. So I'm just using this rivet template. I will link this in the description of the video again. I'm just going to mark where I want my two rivets. So this is a half inch down. Next, I've got a hole punch, which I got from my local hardware shop. But you can get these on Amazon. So again, I'll put a link down in the description for you. And I just have this on the smallest setting and punch right through those holes. Now you can put your post of your rivet through and put a cap on the other side. Now, if you're using all cotton or all canvas, you're going to want to put some Decaville here beforehand because it's most likely that there's not going to be enough thickness for the rivet to grab onto. But for me, because I'm using cork, there's lots of layers here for this to go through. So I'm just going to fit it as it is. Once that's done, I'm using my press to fit it. So I've got rivet dies, that's the bottom die, that's the top die. Change them over to fit your rivets. So I've got one fitted for nine millimeter cap rivets. Now, because I'm using matte black rivets, I'm just gonna cover this bottom metal die with a piece of fabric because I find that they just need to be a little bit more protected from that metal. So I'm just going to sit that inside the bottom die, push the top one down, make sure it's nice and snug and then give it a good press. Now that's done, I'm just going to fit my handle on the other side of the bag. Okay, so I fit my second handle and that's exactly the same as the first one. So I'm just going to turn this over and unclip the lining. Now what we want to do is get everything laying flat. And I'm going to clip the lining and exterior pieces together. OK, so we, we want to baste all of the edges closed. But first of all, we also just want to prepare our zip tabs. So what you want to do is just fold these so that the raw edges are on the inside and you want the short ends to meet. Just clip that together for both of those. 
And what we'll do is just baste those closed on that short end. And at the same time, we're going to sew, we're going to baste close from here all the way around and back down to here. The last thing we need to do is fit these zip tabs. So I've marked each of them 3 eighths of an inch down with a line, and I've also marked the center. So what I want to do is make this mark here line up with these edges. And I want this center mark to line up with the center of the zip. And I'm just gonna take that over and baste that into place. Now, if you're using a domestic sewing machine, you might want to make your zip tabs out of cotton or canvas because this is definitely going to be a hot spot later for a thick seam. Uh, my machine, I know, can just about handle this with the cork, but I wouldn't do any more layers than that. Um, so hence why I'm using cotton here. If I was using cork for my exterior, I would definitely do cotton zip tabs. So just bear in mind the bulk when you get to this part and make sure that you use the appropriate fabrics. And that is your top panel finished. So now we can move on to step five, main panel assembly. For this next step, you're gonna need your completed top panel. You're also gonna need your two lining front and back pieces, your two exterior front and back pieces, your base stabilizer, your base overlay, and your female magnetic snap. So first of all, we're gonna start with the base. Now I've already drawn a line down the center on the wrong side, and I've also drawn a line down the center of my stabilizer. Now what we need to do is put these two together. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape on this stabilizer, just because that seems like the easiest way to keep it in place. Now I'm gonna place this centrally onto the base overlay. And I'm gonna make sure those center lines match up and also that it's half an inch in from the short ends. Now I'm going to fold these long edges in from the base overlay. So again, I'm going to use a little bit of double sided tape, but you could just clip this in place if you prefer. So you just want to fold those in and stick that down. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch these two long edges with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once your base is top stitched, just set that aside and grab your two exterior front and back panels. Now you want to determine which is the bottom if you've got a directional print. So this is the bottom of my panels. I'm going to put those right sides together and then I'm going to clip the bottom together. Now I'm going to sew the bottom here together with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now you might notice that sometimes um, my needles change. As I'm changing between materials, I change my needles regularly. So when I'm sewing cork, I use a Microtex needle, generally a size 80 or 90. If I'm sewing the lining like this, I'll be using a universal size 70 needle. And then later on, when I'm going through more layers, I'll use a larger needle, a 90, a 100, or sometimes a 110 size needle, just depending on how many layers and what kind of fabrics I'm working with. Now that's sewn, I'm just going to take that over to the iron and press this seam open. So if you're using cork or vinyl or leather, you could just top stitch this seam open to hold it open. It'll just mean that it lays nice and flat later on inside the bag. 
Once that seam is pressed open, just turn that over and mark the centers on the short edges of your base. Now what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of double-sided tape here again. You don't have to, but it just helps hold it in place while we're sewing it. And what you want to do is just match those centre marks that you made to the seam. So match that on both sides. And now I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance to stitch this down on both long edges, but I'll also show sew these short edges while I'm at it. Okay, so that's what your exterior looks like right now. So just set that aside and grab your two lining pieces. And again, we want to figure out which side is the bottom and put them right sides together. And we're going to sew through the bottom with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now the lining is sewn, I'm going to press that seam open again, just like we did with the exterior. I'm going to use my iron to do that. But if you're using something like waterproof canvas, you can just do that with your fingers. And then I'm going to top stitch both sides of the seam with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So this is what it looks like once it's top stitched. Now I've got a little imperfection in my fabric there, which is really frustrating, but by the time I'd noticed it, it felt like it was too late. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave it be. It's in the bottom of the bag. When there's stuff in the bag, you won't see it. So I'm just gonna set my lining aside for a minute and grab my top panel and my exterior. And what I want to do is just check that they match here in width, because when you're sewing the top panel and you're putting the zips in and things, sometimes it can end up slightly different size. So you just want to check that they both match perfectly and they do. So that's fine. If for some reason this is bigger, just trim it a tiny bit, but make sure you trim it evenly off both sides and just make it, you know, fit this panel perfectly. So mine's already fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip the tongue and then I'm going to clip it out of the way. So you want to figure out which side of this is going to be your front panel. Mine are identical, so I might go for this one for the front. What I'm going to do is place it right sides together with this section of my top panel. So I'll just make sure it matches on these edges and clip together. Now I'm just going to sew through these two sections with a quarter inch seam allowance. So sometimes you'll notice that I just leave my threads in. Um, that means I don't have to, you know, cut them and start again on the other side. So I just sort of leave my thread in and I just jump to where I'm going next. So if you do that, it just means you just have to trim them afterwards. So I feel like it saves me a little bit of time. Now I'm going to have this. So this is the lining side up. I'm going to grab my lining and place it right sides together and just clip those together along this edge. Now I'm going to sew through this edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now remember the way that we fitted these strap connectors means that they're going to be just here. So you might want to just bear in mind that you press a foot might be hitting these strap connectors here where they bulk up a bit. So 
So you probably noticed that I used my hump jumper when I got to these little sections. Now, if you're using a domestic sewing machine like me, um, you can sometimes skip stitches when you're sort of going uphill with your sewing machine. So just bear in mind, maybe using a hump jumper, they are about two pounds on Amazon and they just really help to avoid skip stitches and things. So you wanna pull your lining down and press it away from the top panel. And do the same with the exterior. So you just wanna kind of pull them both down so you get a nice neat finish up here and along here. Now I'm gonna press mine with the iron because I'm using all cotton. And then we're gonna to top stitch through the seam with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So this is coming along really nicely now. You can start to see what your bag's going to look like. So just unclip that tongue closure and do it up. And we're gonna fit the magnetic snap. So you just want to push down nice and hard on the magnetic snap there. And what you should have is a nice little imprint. So you just want to mark it where that imprint is. And then you can clip this out of the way again. Now grab your washer and place that on top of the mark and mark the two side slits. Now you want to pull your lining up out of the way. You do not want to be going through your lining right now because we're gonna cut these two slits, but we definitely only want to cut the exterior. Once those are cut, use a bit of fray check or something similar just to make sure that they don't spread and don't fray in the future and you can put your magnetic snap through those slits and then on the back we're just going to put the washer on and fold the prongs back Okay, now you might want to just cover those prongs over with a piece of Decaville light. You can just fuse it on, um, or you could use some masking tape or something like that, um, just to protect the lining from these prongs. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is clip the other side together. So just unclip the tongue and close that. You make sure that it fits nice and snug. And place your top panel right side down. Now the handles are going to be, you know, making it a little bit awkward, but that's fine. Got a loose thread there. Okay, so grab your lining and take that, put it right sides together with the top panel and just clip that along this edge. Okay, now I'm going to sew through this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I would recommend sewing this with the exterior side up rather than the lining side up like I was doing, because as you might have noticed, my zip tabs have gone slightly wonky. So even though they're basted into place, they've still kind of gone wonky. So by sewing them, with the exterior on top, you can check that they stay in the correct position. Now that your lining is sewn on, just flip it over and you wanna match your exterior sides up and clip them together. Now we're going to sew this seam with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. When you get to your zip tabs, just make sure that you've got your hump jumper handy because it's gonna be quite a lot of bulk to get over.
Okay, so this next step is one of the hardest steps in the pattern. Now, if you don't like tube stitching, you're really not going to like this. And an alternative to it is to run an extra seam through here just to add strength to this. Because you don't have to top stitch the next section. It It's optional. It's not structural. Um, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this so that the lining and exterior are together. Now your bag is going to get really creased up when we're making it, but don't worry, we can press it all at the end. Okay. So now what I want, yes, is to have the exterior on the inside. And what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch that back seam. And we're going to have to do it through the machine like this, which is going to be awkward. Um, but it's definitely not impossible. I've done it plenty of times. It's just, it's not, it's not a particularly easy top stitch. We're top stitching this seam into place. Now it's on the back of the bag and it's not structural. So if you really want to skip this step, you can go ahead and skip it. Um, but I think it looks great if you can persevere and it's a great skill to learn. Um, so, you know, don't write it off straight away. Maybe give it a go. I'm just gonna clip the edges just to make sure that the lining and exterior are both laying flat. Ideally, I'd love to press that seam, but it's my iron, my iron is not going to fit in there. But if you've got a little iron, you could just press that seam just to get it nice and flat. Um, and I'm going to clip my handles out of the way. If you're doing the large handles, you're definitely going to want to clip them out of the way. I would also recommend opening up this tongue closure. I think this makes it a lot easier. So this is the seam that we're top stitching and we're going to start from here and work our way through. You're probably not going to get to see much of it on the machine because the bag is going to be in the way, but hopefully you'll see it's it's kind of a bit of a challenge. Don't be afraid to scrunch your bag up. You're going to have to do to get it through. Um, and then when you're finished, take your time getting the bag off the machine. If necessary, you can hand crank your way through a lot of this. Um, for me, I love to hand crank through a lot of this, especially when I get to the thick parts where the zip tabs are. So just consider that as an option too. So that's the tube stitching done. Now, one of my testers was making an all cork version and her recommendation, if you struggle with the top stitch, is to go from one side to the center and then stop and pull your threads through to the lining and tie them off. Then you can start from the other side and finish in the center as well. And that way it's, it's much easier than 
forcing it through your machine and you can just tie off your thread so you don't end up with a lot of back stitching showing. So there's a lot of different methods to try this. Um, if you've never tried a tube stitch before, just, just give it a go and see how you get on. And the very last part of this step is to baste these sides together. So what I'm going to do is just clip the lining and exterior together. Now we've already done the top panel, so we're just doing the rest of it. And you might want to just make sure that your lining seam on the bottom matches your exterior seam on the bottom. Now I'm just going to baste these sides all the way around. So if you've got a domestic sewing machine like me, you might find it easier to take the tabletop off so that you can baste around those edges nice and easily. And we're using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you can set that aside now and we're going to begin step six which is the card slots so for this step you're going to need your two card slot pieces and two of your lining pieces now if you're skipping the card slots i'll put on the screen what time to skip to um, and if you're skipping the pockets altogether there'll be another time to skip to in the tutorial so on your card slot pieces on the back you want to mark them according to the pattern Make sure that you mark the bottom, so I've put a B there for mine, so you know which end you're starting from. And what we need to do is fold it wrong sides together on this first line. And give that a press with the iron. Next, you need to fold it right sides together on the second line. And then we're going to go wrong sides together on the third line. And we're just going to keep doing that until all of the lines are folded. So once your card slots are all folded, we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch each fold. So just pull it away and top stitch one at a time so that you're not stitching through the others. Once that's done, I'm going to baste from the bottom to the top. And on both sides, I'm going to do it from the bottom to the top because you'll get a little bit of stretching as you go. And if you do one from the top to the bottom and one from the bottom to the top, you'll end up with wonky card slots. So just make sure whichever way you choose to do it, you do them both in the same direction. So there's my card slots and if you're having two sets you just want to replicate that again. Now grab your lining pieces and we need to mark these and cut out the places for the card slots. So you're just marking two and three eighths in. From each side. Okay, once you're happy that that looks nice and centered, you can just go ahead and cut those lines. Okay, so there's your pocket piece and you just need to get rid of the middle piece and place a card slots in between instead. Make sure your cards are pointing upwards the correct way. And then just grab this piece and place it right sides together. Now you're lining up the bottom edges because your card slots should be a bit taller depending on the fabric you're using they might be taller or shorter than this but the idea is that they are definitely going to be bigger so we'll just clip those two pieces together and now we're going to sew this edge with three eighths of an inch seam allowance so 
So once that's sewn, just push that away from the pocket. And then we're going to top stitch through the side panel with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab this second side piece and place it right sides together with the card slots. And again, you want to make sure you've got the bottom lined up and just clip those together. Now I'm going to sew through this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to press this back and top stitch it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just like we did on this side. So that's your completed card slot. So maybe just check that a card fits in okay and that you're happy with those. Now I decided to do an extra row of top stitching down each side. I just thought that kind of looked cool. So um, I've done that and I've done my second pocket. So if you're doing two, just repeat the whole process to make another one. Now you'll notice that they're a little bit odd shaped and also they're a little bit bigger than your standard pocket pieces. So grab one of your other lining pieces, line up the bottom and make sure it's centered like this. And then we need to trim the card slot pocket to match. So it's supposed to be a little bit too big. That's so that then you can trim it and make sure it's the perfect size. So it's up to you whether you want to mark it first with a pen or if you just want to go ahead and cut. I think I'm going to just go ahead and cut, but I will put a little weight down on it. Okay, I'm going to do the same with my second card slot and then that's this step completed and we can move on to step seven. For step seven, you're going to need your two exterior pockets, your four lining pockets, your two card slot pockets, your two exterior base pocket bases and your two lining pocket bases. You're also going to need your two pocket zips. So these are 11 inches each and you should have a zipper pull on each one already. Now to get started, you want to grab two of your lining pieces. If you're having card slots, then it's the ones without card slots. And you want to just put these wrong sides together and just clip them around and do the same with the second set. Once those are clipped, you're just going to baste around the outside with an eighth of an inch seam allowance for both of these. Once those basted, just set those aside for later. Now grab one of your pocket zips and one of your base exteriors and make sure that you've got your zip pull on there already and just place those right sides together on one end and clip them together. And now we're going to baste through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now just grab one of your lining pocket bases and you want to place that right sides down on top of the zip and just clip that together. Now sew through here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, you just want to pull the lining away and give it a little press there and pull the exterior away and press that too. So I'm just gonna put a couple of clips there to hold those together. And we're going to top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now unclip those and place the base exterior right sides together with the other end of the zip. And we're just going to base those together with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So we're going to fit the last lining piece, but first of all, we're just going to trim an eighth of an inch off the end, and this will just give it a nice snug fit. So then you want to place this lining piece right sides down on this end of the zip and just clip those together. Now we just need to sew through this end with a quarter inch seam allowance. 
So you just need to top stitch this side. So the same as you did with the other side, just pull the lining and the exterior away from the zip and clip it into place. And we're just gonna top stitch hit through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then while I'm at the machine, I'm going to baste these long edges closed so that the lining and the exterior are sewn together. So that should be your completed pocket gusset. So repeat the whole process so that you've got two of these and then we're ready to move on to step eight, final assembly. So this is the final step. So you're gonna need everything, but we'll start off with an exterior piece and a pocket gusset. Now you need to mark all of your pocket pieces, the exteriors and the linings um, with the centers at the top and bottom. You also need to mark the centers of your zips and your bases on your gusset. And you've also got another mark here on the sides as shown in the pattern for these exterior pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match up the center mark on the zip with this exterior pocket piece. And I'll just clip that together. I'll just put a couple of clips there. Then I'm going to match up one of the center marks on the base, right sides together with the bottom center mark. Then these edge markings, they should match up with your seam here where the zip begins. So you want to clip those together next. So it's a tight fit around these corners. So what we're gonna do is just snip in every half inch or so, just quarter of an inch snips because we don't want to go past where the seam allowance is going to be. And we'll be using a 3 8 seam allowance in a minute. Okay, so I'm just gonna clip the zip all the way around first. Now that's clipped into place, we're gonna sew it with a scant 3 8 three eighths seam allowance to begin with. Because what we want to do is help the zip to lay nice and flat, but we don't want our stitches to show in a minute once, once we've done the 3 eighths on the next step. So for now, we're just using a scant 3 eighths, which is a little bit less than a 3 eighths. Now it's totally up to you, but what I like to do here to get a nice finish on my curves is I like to just hand baste it in place first. That means when I go to the sewing machine, it's not moving at all and I don't have loads of clips in the way. So that's just a personal preference for me. It just takes a couple of minutes. Um, I prefer it to staples because I'm not having to sort of dodge them as I'm sewing. So for me, this is like my preferred method. They're really big stitches, just hand sewing them through. So that's both of my um, pockets just hand basted. So you can see it, it's not like a skilled hand sewing or anything like that. I'm literally just holding it in place, but it means I can sew it around the machine without anything shifting. Now, if you're doing both of your pockets at once, make sure that your zips are closing in opposite directions because we want both of them to be on the front when they're closed. So that means that one needs to close to the right and one needs to close to the left. And I'll take this over to the machine and I'll sew it on with a scant 3 8 inch seam allowance. So the reason I like to use my standard presser foot when doing this is because I can push the zip and keep it flat whilst I'm sewing. So I just move my needle over a little bit to get to that scant 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, and in a moment I'll do the same thing but I'll move it over even further so I can get the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So what you need to do next is grab your two card slot pieces. So if you're not having card slots, just your two remaining lining pieces. Flip them over and mark on the back a three and a half inch gap because that's going to be our turning gap. Now you want to place this right sides together with the exterior so the zip is sandwiched between 
and just clip those both together. Use these center marks to match them up and make sure you've got them nice and neat. Once that's all clipped, we're going to sew with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance from this starting point all the way around to this mark here. Make sure you backstitch really well on these two marks because you're going to be turning it through that gap. And when you're going along here, just use your presser foot to feel and flatten out the zip and make sure that it's nice and flat as you sew around. Okay, so those two are stitched. Now, this one didn't go perfectly the first time. I felt like I'd got a slightly sort of wobbly line. So I just went over that a second time. So don't worry if you don't get it perfect the first time around. Now, um, I am just going to use my pinking shears just a little bit up here. I think it might just help the curves to sit slightly nicer. I didn't do this on my other bags, but I'm gonna give it a try on this one. Now you've got the challenge of turning your pocket out through this tiny little hole. So this is the reason that we don't attach Decoville to cork and vinyl. So if you're making cork and vinyl pockets, I have recommended in the pattern that you put the Decoville on the inside of the pocket instead of on this section. Okay, so just check that you've got no major puckers or anything, that it's good all the way around. And then um, I'm going to spend a bit of time just pushing this all out and pressing it. Now, on the inside, we want to, we want to just fold this over and make sure that it's pressed nice and neat there. Because when we top stitch it, we want to catch this. What I'm also going to do is just put a little bit of fabric glue there. I'm using Fabri-Tac, which I'll link in the description. And I'm just going to stick that down so that it stays in place when we top stitch because the next st step will be to top stitch it. Right, once those are all pressed out, um, you're ready to top stitch. So I have used a little bit of Fabri-Tac glue just here just to hold this in place on each of these. So what I'm going to do is top stitch all the way around this exterior part of the panel. Now to do this, I find it much easier to turn it like this. So I'll close the pocket to start with. And I find it easier to top stitch like this. Now I'm going to start down here so that I can close this turning gap first and then I'll go all the way round and back. So those are my pockets. I'm actually quite happy with how those turned out. My curves um, are looking quite nice. They really do get better with every time. Um, I know they say practice makes perfect. That's not really true because none of us can be perfect, but you definitely see an improvement each time. So on the inside, I used a lighter thread. So I used um, like a white thread in my bobbin so it would match my lining fabric and a black on top. So yeah, I think that looks quite neat. Now what I'm gonna do is grab these other lining pieces that we had that we basted together and just place one right side up decide which one which side you want in your pocket and which side you want in your 
main panel. So I'll probably have this one in my pocket because I feel like it will be seen more. And what you need to do is match up the center marks on the top and the bottom and clip the whole thing together. So once you get to these bottom corners, again, you're going to want to cut into the gusset to make it fit better. So just little snips up to maybe a quarter of an inch, no bigger than that. And then you can spread those corners out so that they fit better. So you'll see that your slits stretch around that corner. Now I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew that on with a scant 3 8 seam allowance. Now before you sew that on, just double check that your zips are definitely closing in opposite directions because if you missed that earlier somehow, now might be your last chance without having to, you know, tear the whole thing apart. So just make sure that one closes on the right and one closes on the left. Okay, so for this step, you're just basting. So if it's not absolutely perfect, just don't worry about it because you'll be sewing that on in a minute. Now, if you're not having pockets, you should be joining back in with us now. And what you want to do is you need to take one of your lining fabric pieces and one of your exterior fabric pieces and place them wrong sides together. So you'll have a lining facing out and an exterior facing out. Baste those together. And then when we're using the pocket, you're going to be using that instead. So grab your main panel, panel, main bag. And on this top section, make sure that you mark the centers on both sides. Now, what we're going to do is place it, this pocket piece into that end section. And you want to match up those center marks at the top and clip them together. And then match up your bottom gusset mark with the seam on the bottom. Okay, so everything we're looking at is the lining. This is the lining side of the pocket or just the end pocket pieces. This is the lining side of the main bag. And we're just going to clip this all the way around. Now, when you get down to these bottom corners, you're going to want to snip into the main part of the bag just a little bit. So just like little quarter inch snips just on the corner. And this way you can spread it out so that the corner fits better. Right, once you've got that all clipped, you can decide again whether you want to hand baste. Now, I love hand basting curves. It doesn't take long. It just takes a couple of minutes. It makes such a difference to getting the curves nice and neat. And it means that when I'm on my machine, I'm not dodging staples. I'm not dodging clips. Everything just stays exactly where I want it. It's really nice and easy. So what I'm going to do is just hand baste really big stitches all the way around here.
One other thing I should have mentioned, make sure before you sew your pockets on that the zips are closing at the front. So all of your zips are going to be closed at the front. Your pockets, one will be going in one direction, one in the other, which means that when you fit them, they need to be fitted to the correct sides so that all your zips close on the front. Okay, so once you've sewn one pocket on, just sew the other side on the same. This bit doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I just use a scant 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. It's You can see it's, it's totally not perfect, um, especially this one. Um, but that's fine because we're going to put the binding on and that's when we're going to do the final seam and that's when we need to get it good. So grab your binding. Now I've got half inch bias binding as specified in the pattern. So when it's unraveled, it's about one, about one and three quarter inches and it's double folded like that. And now it's half an inch. So I kind of cheat with my binding. So... <laughs> This isn't the way that most people do it, but this is the way I do mine. It's quicker, I love it. And I don't, I know a lot of people like hand sew their binding. I just do not have the patience for that. So I'll show you what I do. Now, first of all, I just simply wrap it around at the top. So I make sure that it's even on both sides and I just clip that on there. Now, most people will sew it on one side first and then turn it over onto the other side and sew it again. I don't like to sew this seam so many times. Um, I feel like it's, especially if I'm using cork or vinyl, you end up sewing it twice for the binding, once when you're sewing the pocket on. It's just, a, it's a lot of holes, you know, for sewing. So I like to do my binding this way, plus it's a lot quicker. So I'm just gonna clip it in place all the way around. I'm just making sure that it's nice and neat on top, that it's even on each side, and I'm gonna clip it all the way around the pocket. So the reason I use a scant 3 8 of an inch seam allowance when I'm sewing the pocket on is because I don't want my stitching to show right now. So you can see that it's, it's hidden at the moment, you can't see it. I also don't want to sew exactly over the same holes because I just feel like it's gonna weaken that seam. So now that I'm up near the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over this end just by about half an inch or an inch, something like that, and clip that into place so that it's covering the raw end where we started. So that's what it looks like. Just check that you can't see any seams. And then I'm going to sew it on with a matching thread. And when you match the thread, it just means you can't you can't see the stitches at all, which is just brilliant. So I'm going to sew this on. I'm going to be careful to get three eighths of an inch seam allowance the whole way around. Up here where the zip is, I'm going to try and get my presser foot up against the zip tape so that I can get a nice neat finish. I'm also going to um, be careful with my zip because that's the hardest part is getting the zip from this pocket. So you, you want to make sure that you can get past it. So I'm going to try and start just after the zip and then come all the way around and then I can move it out of the way just for the very last bit. Once I've done that, I'll do the exact same on the other side of the bag. Okay, so there is my finished binding. Now, yes, it's not as neat as if I'd done it by hand, but I'm really happy with that. To see it, you kind of have to like look into the bag. So I just don't think anybody's ever going to notice if it's not absolutely perfect, but I'm really happy with that. And 
I'm just going to do the other side with the binding and then the bag's ready to turn out. Okay, so there's my binding finished. Now binding, you've probably noticed, is something you can really take your time with or if you're me, you can just kind of cheat your way through. So you can make it out of the fabric that you're using for the lining and then you can hand sew it. Or for me, I just bought a huge reel of black binding and I use it no matter what color lining I'm doing. And yeah, I just sew it all in one go. So it really depends how you're feeling about it. But for me, this is my favorite way to do binding. Um, so this is how I've chosen to do it. Now, I've got a few loose threads to sort out. And what I'm gonna do is just check that my pockets are sewn okay. So I'm just gonna check that there's no, you know, huge differences in there before I turn it out. Because what I could do if I saw a problem here is run an extra line of stitching through. But I went through using my awl to guide my presser foot and making sure that I was as close to the zip as I could get. So hopefully I should have a nice consistent line across my pockets. So the best way to find out is going to be to turn it right side out. Okay, so I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just pushing my seams out, getting rid of my little stray threads and checking all of my seams. Now, remember how I specifically told you to make sure that your pockets were closing at the front? Well, I did not do that. And as you can see now my zips, these ones are closing at the front and these ones are closing at the back. So just remember to pay attention when you're sewing your pockets on. So if you're wondering how to get your creases out, my method is simply to find a towel that can go inside. So got one here. Now. I just shove the whole thing inside. You want to find one that's roughly the right size. I'm hoping this one is. That's about right. Okay, and then I'm gonna take it over to the iron and I'm going to steam it all the way around and give it a little press on all of my cotton areas and on the side pockets. Ta-da! So you've, you've already seen it, but it's nice to do a little reveal at the end of the video, isn't it? So I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I love the little grab handles. Um, I think it works really well with the crossbody strap. So I'll just show you how I connect that on. So I just flip that on opposite rectangle rings. And then hopefully you can see me. And then I can wear it like this. So I think it's a really great size for an everyday handbag. Um, I'm really hoping that you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much to everybody who supports me with my pattern writing because I couldn't do this without you guys. And I've expanded recently to do like hardware and I did my first sew along. Um, so if you can just kind of give me feedback, let me know what kind of things you want to see us doing. That'd be really great. I think we're gonna do another sew along for this. I'm almost certain, and I'm probably going to make Debbie sew it like I did with the Momexa one. Um, but just let us know in the comments, because it's always good to have some feedback and know what you guys really want to see us doing. Um, yeah, and hopefully, hopefully you can kind of let us on to what you want to see next. I hope that you made it all the way through the tutorial. I know it is, it is a tough pattern. It's not an easy one, but it's so much fun. And if you just want a really quick sew you can just make it without the pockets it's so much quicker um so it kind of depends what you're going for i feel like it's quite an adaptable bag you know i've made one for adam uh, and then obviously i've made a few girly ones as well i think you can adapt it quite a lot to a lot of people so i'm hoping that they would make really really good unique gifts let me know and i'll see you guys for the next tutorial which hopefully won't be too long